life, everything that you approach, then if it's God, it opens up. Yeah. It's not like walking through a door where you have to turn the handle and push it open. I'm talking about the doors when you walk into a, a, a supermarket where you step on it, yeah. it opens up. Yeah. See, you didn't have to touch anything. It sensed that you were there. Now, you getting this? What God is doing, it comes with favor. It comes with an anointing on your life. See, I don't have to open my own doors anymore. Because if I open them, it means I did it. But now I'm in a season where things just open up to me. All I have to do is follow God. Follow, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and move forwards. It opens up. So when the anointing tonight falls upon your life, Every door you come to that is God will open up for you. And he's going to open up doors you never knew existed. That's how good God is. That he'll open things up that he's had for you. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know what I have the plans for you. He has plans already written, blueprinted for you. Plans you don't even know about. So now he's opening those doors up that you never knew existed. Amen. You'll be surprised even tomorrow. Some of you, if you go to work or, or just family, different things, God's going to open it up to you. Amen. New things. Amen. So everything that has been in your life, the last season of your life that has been shut down, closed off, things that you've been praying about, that you couldn't access in this season, access granted. Amen. What has been shut down by the enemy, the lack, the resources that you need is opened up to you. Amen. Relationships that you couldn't access before, God is bringing them Amen. favor, favor, favor. Amen. Access granted. Tell your neighbor. Access granted. Access granted. Mm -hmm. Doors are symbolic for opportunity. In, in one translation, in the message, it says this in verse 8. It says, I'm staying right here in Ephesus. It says, a huge door of opportunity for good work has opened up here. Doors also mean access. Again, access granted. So when a door is open up for you, you have, an, you have access, but you have to seize the opportunity. You have to move through. But again, you have to, by faith, see it in the realm of the Spirit first. You have to believe it. You have to see it first to obtain it. Amen? Amen. God is so good. A, a great and effective door. The word great is speaks of the magnitude of what God is getting ready to do in your life. What God is getting ready to do isn't small, but it's going to be great. It's going to be colossal, large, extravagant, extraordinary, because he's that kind of God. See, you have to dream. You have to, to see with a vision what God has for you. Don't think small. Think beyond. If you can do it in your own ability, then it's it's not God, because God does exceedingly above all that he can do, way beyond. It's time, I'm telling you. The word great and effective, the word effective means this. It means to accomplish the expected result, to accomplish the expected result. That's what effective means. So what that means is the expected result. So you have to expect something to have the result. You will have the result of what you're expecting. So what are you expecting? Because that's what you're going to have. If you're not expecting anything, you're not going to get anything. Are you expecting your breakthrough? Yes. Are you expecting the increase that you need? Yes. The family members to come into the Lord? Yes. Those things, that's what you'll have when the door is open to you. A great and effective door. So in other words, you determine the size of the door. Most people look at that door and think that's the size of a door. But I've released my faith enough that when I look to see my door, I don't see a door. It's wide open. 
It's open to me. See, we limit God by our, our lack of faith. But when you have faith in God, there is no limit to him. And, and here's the thing. The Bible says that he'll open up a door that no man can shut. Amen. No man can shut this door. So when God opens this up this time for you, nobody's going to shut it for you. Amen. No, no, no uh, family member, no uh, employer, no pastor or leader, nobody's going to shut it for you when God opens it up. Because what the God does is he takes a door and he'll take the hinges off of it so no man can shut it. Amen. It's an open door. Amen. He removes it. And you just step on through. He's a good God. So there's a great and effective door, but here lies the challenge. There are many adversaries. At the door, there are many of these enemies coming against you. So there's a door of opportunity. It means there's adversaries. So what we've been doing, I believe, is that we've been fighting these enemies, the adversary coming against us. The spirit of lack, the spirit of poverty, sickness and disease and, and people and all this stuff coming against us is only adversaries because adversaries don't congregate at a closed door. So the thing that you've been fighting is only an indication that your door has been opened. Amen. So the more you've been fighting bigger the door because the enemy don't want you to access it because if the door is closed the enemy has no need to try to stop you so I'm telling you many of you tonight you've been going through so much fighting and battles in your life it's an indication that God has brought you here tonight because your door is already open the adversary is a loser he's already defeated it's already been done it's already been sealed He's already lost. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is no weapon formed against you that will prosper. He causes you to triumph. You win. You put your foot on the devil's neck. Time to get under your feet. You, you tramp him down and, and get him out of dodge. He's a loser. He's a liar. You won. Your door is already open. David understood this in 1 Samuel 17, 26. He understood his open door because he said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He, listen, David was a little guy, but he understood that his door was opening up for him. He had a revelation that the door was opening of, of opportunity on the other side of his adversary. Not on this side, but on the other side of his adversary, Goliath. And so what he, he understood was that for him to get to the next dimension of his life, next dimension of his ministry, that he had to kill the giant to access. See, the giant wasn't there to kill him. He was there to kill the giant. See, you're there to kill the giant, to remove the giant in your life. He's not there to kill you. He can't. Jesus already paid the price. He's already set you free. He's given you authority to use the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has already paid the price. So you just need to know who you are in Christ Amen. and to walk in who you are and whose you are and tell the enemy that he has no legal right and we veto everything he tries to send you Amen. because we can legislate what has already been set in heaven. Every time sickness comes, I veto that. Amen. Every time lack comes, I veto that. Amen. Every time trouble comes, I veto that. Amen. I give it no legal right in my life. Amen. Because Jesus already gave me that power, that authority. Amen? Amen? God had opened a door in the realm of the Spirit for David that David could never find when he was out in the pasture with the sheep, when he was out there singing and, and playing in the field. He accessed that open door when he stepped into the battlefield. You're in the battlefield. There's a door that's open that will take you to the next dimension of what he purposed for you. I'm not talking about the next level. I'm talking about the next dimension. There's a difference. We can make a step, 
That's a, that's a level. But there's seven levels in one dimension. Amen. So when you step through the door, you're stepping into another dimension. You're jumping seven different levels at one time. Amen. That is acceleration taking place. So God's redeeming time. He's accelerating things in your life. You thought it was over, but God can do it in an instant. That's what he's doing in this season with an open door. It's opening up. I had, uh, uh, well, I'm going to Alabama here um, this week yet. And Bishop Knox, he wrote one of the um, forwards in my book. And he told me when he was writing the forward, as he was writing the forward for this book, the doors began to open for him in government. He's been with some of the biggest leaders in this nation, senators and different ones. God opened the door because of the anointing of the open. When it gets on you, it's on you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you when, you, when you go places, even tomorrow, you'll, you'll find favor that you never had before. Amen. When you go into your workplace, favor with your boss, your employer. Amen. And if there's a position you've been waiting for for years, God's going to open it up. He'll remove that Vashti. And bring you into your place of promotion. Some of you want in ministry. God's going to open those doors. Quit trying to do it yourself. When God does it, he does it. And it's a whole lot easier when he does it. He never told us to build our own ministry. He's building it upon this rock. He'll do it. See, see, I can go buy all the books and all the magazines, how to grow my church. But there's a book that I have called the Bible, Amen. and I'm, I'm to be led by the Holy Spirit, not by programs. Amen. He'll build by His Spirit, Amen. not by my effort of making it happen and, and trying to do all the formulas. And listen to me, I, I, you know, I don't even want to go there with that kind of stuff because if I do that, it becomes fleshly Amen. and becomes a stench in God's nostrils. I want His Spirit. Amen. His Spirit's here tonight. And the more we acknowledge him and begin to honor his presence and his glory, that it's all him, he's allowed to do more in your life Amen. by putting him first. Jesus, he's a good God. The thing that I want to talk about tonight, there's many doors that I talk about in my book. But there's one specific one that I want to share tonight that I believe we have to get right. Most people don't have this right. And it's called the door of utterance. The door of utterance. Because we don't realize how powerful we really are. What we say, what we release, because we become prophets of our own future. Because our life moves the direction of what we're speaking. So if you don't like what you're living, change what you're saying. Because the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So your life is going either one of two directions, towards death, destruction, or life, the abundant life that he's promised you and given you. If you're speaking words of death, unbelief, saying negative things, your life will take that course. If you're saying, oh, I'm just so broke. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. I'm just so sick and tired. You say those things, the realm of the spirit is obligated to bring it to pass. So there's demonic forces out here, and there's heavenly forces over here. And when you begin to speak negativity, unbelief, your life, the devils, the demons, the adversaries hear that and now have legal access into your life. Or you can speak life. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Great grace, favor on my life. Angels say, yes, yes, yes. And now they can go out and perform those things. But most angels are bound because we don't release them to minister on our behalf. But we give more legal right to the enemy to do things to us. And we wonder why. God, why am I going through this? Poor old me. 
Poor old me. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm not poor no more. I am blessed. I am highly favored with great grace and divine intervention in my life. I'm abundantly blessed. I understood that when I was a young boy. I, I spoke it over my life. I used to walk around for hours saying, God, I am, I am blessed abundantly. I'm abundantly blessed. Lord, I have the resources of heaven. Lord, money cometh to me. I used to write it on my checks. Money cometh to me over top my name. Then, then, the, then the teller would get it that at the bank. Money cometh to Brian Lake. <laughs> what she didn't know was she just came in agreement with me. If two of you agree touching any one thing, it will be done. Amen. Money cometh to me. I, I, would, I would quote those things and speak those things over my life. And God has blessed me. And as a testimony to God, only to God, you know, I have multiple businesses, but it's only because of him. Amen. And, and again, this is to his glory. One of the businesses that I have right now, the industry that I'm in, is actually here in, in um, April, May of next year, will be either the second or the first largest in that industry in the United States. That's God. And guess what? I'm not there to work in it. I'm not there managing it even. God, I have somebody in place to do all that for me. I'm out ministering, doing what he called me to. And I, I believe that's one reason he's blessing all of it for me. Because I got my hands off of it. To let him do what he needs to do. And I'm doing what he called me to do. Amen? Amen? All things are possible to those who believe. There's no limit to God. We're the one that limits him. Jesus. The door of utterance, Colossians 4.3 says this, Colossians 4.3. It says, meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. So in this hour and, and what we're living in, what we're speaking is the mysteries of Christ. It's revelation that's coming forth in this hour. And he's only going to give the revelation to the people that he can trust. He's not going to pour it out to where he can't trust people. He has to trust you. That's one reason you went through so many things. Because, because he had to check your character. How do you react in times of pressure? What comes out of your mouth? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when pressure comes in our life, we really know who we are then. Amen. The way we act, the way we respond. Just like with, with Molly here that was in the hospital, it was a very critical moment. How was I going to react? How was anybody going to react? Was I going to let the enemy have her? No. Was it challenging? Yes, but I know who my God is. Amen. I know who to call too. Not a bunch of unbelievers, but the believers. Amen. Because in a moment like that, you better have somebody that you can call that can grab a hold of God and believe with you. Amen. Not a bunch of doubt and unbelief. Amen. You have to know those people. And you have to have the word already in you. Because you can't just all of a sudden, okay, i got to start confessing in those moments. No, it has to dwell up from inside of you. It has to already be in you. That's why you have to meditate night and day in the Word, spending time reading the Word, fellowshipping with Him, knowing who He is, knowing His Word, because at that moment, either fear is going to come out or faith is going to come out. And if you've been feeding on, on, on TV shows and all these soap operas and all that junk, that's what's going to come out. Some of these TV shows aren't, are not fit to watch. But yet we've, we've polluted ourselves with some of those things on TV. Some of our favorite TV. He's opened us a door for the word. It means that I have an opportunity to speak. Because in this hour that we are stepping into, what you say is going to release your miracle. It's going to release that thing that you need. It's a time of, of, as I said before, I think before when I was here, it's your tipping point. Where all the prayers that you've prayed over the years, the Bible talks about that they ascend 
as incense. And there's bowls in heaven. And they begin to fill those bowls. And they fill up. They're at the altar of God. And, and all the prayers that you've been praying, rising up as incense, fill those bowls in heaven. But there's, there, there's a time. There's an open door. There's a moment. There's a tipping point. That when the bowl is full, the Bible says that the angel takes a fiery censer and sticks in the bowl and begins to stir it with fire. All the prayers that you prayed over the years for that one specific thing, that person, that family member, your ministry, whatever it is. And he stirs it. And, and that angel that's stirring it is watching the father on the throne. Because all he's looking for is the nod from the father. As he looks at the father, the father is sitting there waiting for your open door, waiting for your tipping point, your appointed time, your Kairos moment. And when he gives the nod, what the angel does then, he takes that bow and he tips it and pours it back down on earth. But remember, it was mixed with fire. Fire means Holy Ghost. So your prayers are mixed with the Holy Ghost to perform the answer. So your prayer now comes back answered. So whatever you've been praying for in, your, in the last season of your life is coming back, is being tipped back on you, Amen. answered. It's answered. Amen. No more pressing in for it. God's answering it. It's your moment. It's your tipping point. It's your appointed time. Bless God. See, the enemy realizes if he can keep you quiet, keep you silent, and you're not praising and shouting glory to him, that he, that, that he has you. See, some of you are praising and shouting because you have some faith. You know God has done it for you, and he'll do it for you again. I've been through so many things in my life, experiences, that, that now when something happens, I'm okay because he's brought me through before and before that and a time before that. So now it becomes easier to have faith in God. So, I, you know, sometimes I don't know what to do. That's okay. All I know to do is have faith in God, no matter what it is. And he brings, brings me through every time. Have faith in God. And, and we need to quit having faith in our faith. Because we look at our faith, and we say, oh, I don't know. I don't have faith for that. So that brings it all back to you again. It puts all the glory on you. The Bible doesn't say have faith in your faith. It has faith in God. That's all I need to do. So that, so now it isn't my faith anymore. It's his faith that is unlimited and powerful. And it removes the burden to believe. Because we've been trained so long that we have to confess and confess and confess and confess and do it this way and do it that way. Five formulas. Here's how we do this. Listen, have faith in God. Amen. He's faithful to perform. His word doesn't return back to us void. His word not my word, his word, his word in me, his word in the Bible, speaking it forth, comes back, not void, not empty, but with an answer, is your tipping point. He, the enemy tries to keep us silent. And, and, and the, the season that you're moving in, you must open your mouth and speak his word. Amen. Cannot be silent. Can't let the enemy come in. See, what happens with most people is, they begin to experience something in their life and go through some challenges and they begin to withdraw from church, withdraw from the word because they're, they feel so sad and, and, and oppressed and depressed. So they walk away from God when they should be running to God. Yeah. Run to church. Get around other believers. Yeah. Get in the word. Yeah. I see it all the time. People just begin to withdraw. Yeah. They walk away from God in the hour that they need him. They run to him. He's the answer. Some of you need to, again, open your mouths and begin to speak his word. See, because you have to understand sound, the words that we speak, are spirit. They're spirit. They carry something. They're either carrying his anointing, or if you're speaking doubt and unbelief, they're carrying the negativity. It'll pull you down, pull you out of the game. But when you speak his word, it'll pull you up into another place because sound is powerful. Look in a dictionary, the word sound becomes...